Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. I love that intro. We sound so professional. Never get tired of that. I never get tired of that. This is uh, (laughs) Strickland Bonner, and uh, today on the show, my... uh, Who's our guest today? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Doug Sandler's going to be our guest today. I'm going to be hosting. He's going to be guesting because we are talking about... Social media and Doug Sandler is the king of social media. I don't know about the king, but I'll tell you, I have learned a lot in the last two years about it for sure. Well, I don't know that much about it, so I'm going to kind of turn this one over to you. I'm going to pose a few questions, but really, Doug is the man, the myth, the legend. If you're just tuning in with us, we are the nice guys. This Hi. is the nice guys podcast. Me well, and Doug. I, mean, I love being a nice guy, it's better than being a crappy guy. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Uh, and it's good for business. And we really, we're here to teach people how being a nice guy can can be great for business. Uh, we want to give you business tips on how to uh, get customers, how to grow your business. Um, uh, and how to keep your customers, uh, too. That is- you got to keep them after you get after them? After you get them, keep them, and you maximize what you can do with them. Sure, why not? Let's do that. It sounds like a lot of work. Uh, it is a lot of work, but I'll tell you, it's worth it when you go to the bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that, that's always a good thing. So, um, social media. It is, it is the hottest topic right now. Social media in 2015, it is, it is key. It's important. If you're not a part of social media, you need to get involved right now. You're not too late. It's not too late. If you don't know how to tweet and you don't know how to do anything with LinkedIn or on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, there are a million, million ways to uh, to reach out to your customers. It just depends on what your market is. So, Doug, I, I, I'm not a bird. I don't tweet. I, I don't know what linking in. I what? Do you where really should not, I start? Do you really not tweet? No, I, yeah, I do tweet. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, Creating, I'm painting a picture. I know, I, but I, but seriously though, I don't really know. No, I I, 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 I tweet on occasion, but usually it's like you know what I had for breakfast. Or, oh you know, boy, uh, okay. So, so that's a good place to start. What a great starting point. That's where I used to feel as though Twitter was, where Twitter aligned itself in the world of social media. It was because of what I knew of Twitter, I knew of celebrities that were like Kim Kardashian that's taking pictures of her booty and putting it on, uh, putting it on Twitter, and and those pictures, while they certainly are wonderful. It's uh, it's not the kind of social media that I think is going to get you any business. Like Charlie Sheen, yeah. I, I well, love he did following. come up with a great hashtag, winning. You know, yeah, so. there you go. That's true. So, so w- let's start with Twitter. That's a that's a great place to start. So, uh, if you are not on Twitter, stop again. Well, we're gonna we I give you this instruction every time. Stop my podcast for a moment. Get on Twitter, get an account going, and then come on back to here. So let's... It's free, so put pause right now. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll Go wait. open your Twitter account. Okay. Okay, they should have done it by now. It's, so that, it's that okay, bad. It's that quick. It's too easy. It's really easy. And so, free. So, and it is free. And I will tell you something. Uh, Twitter, for me, over the last two years, has been the single biggest source of, uh, of business, of leads, of, um, of interest, of content. It has been the, the, the gateway for everything that my business has, uh, has gone through. Twitter has been such a great, great um, starting point for me with, with social media. We'll talk about LinkedIn also, but let's just focus on, on Twitter for a moment. All right. So 140 characters max. It seems like, as you said, it's for celebrities. It's for little kids. It's for whatever. How do you get business from it? Okay. So let's start with some of the facts. Fact number one, you're not going to have a list of followers and follow people just for the sake of following them and having you fo- and following them and having them follow you. You need to come up with a precise method. So here's what I've done. Uh, I personally have gone through this program called Manage Flitter. So it's M A N A G E F L I T T E R dot com. Manage Flitter dot com. Great, great starting point. What Manage Flitter does is it, it allows you to build a list using proper methods other than just dumping on a bunch of people and getting them to follow you. You're, you're able to use filters through Manage Flitter and determine who are the best people for you to follow and who are the best people that follow you. Uh, the most important thing on Twitter is having a quality list of names, people that, you are, uh, that you're connected with in some way, shape, or form. So uh, the way that I do that is I just work through this mechanism called hashtags. So are you familiar with what hashtags are, Strick? Uh, it's like that little pound sign thing, right? Okay, so it's the pound sign thing, exactly. Well, you really are. We're going back to basics with you, aren't we? <laughs> 
So what I do is I go. Uh, Twitter's got this little search mechanism at the top of the of the top of the page. You just go ahead and put in a hashtag. Put in a hashtag SMB. Let's say small medium business. I think that's what does SMB stand for. That I, don't I have know. no idea. Okay, so let's just use business hashtag business. When you do a search of that, everybody that is having a conversation about business is going to come up in that search box. Start following people that you feel have some some level of similarities to you. All you right now want to do is start building that list. We've talked about the list before in networking. We're going to start building up building up your list and building up the uh, the people that you are following. Hopefully, those people, if you do it right and you're active with them, because you don't want to be a silent tweeter, you want them to follow you back. If a tweet falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it. Does it make a sound? It does. It makes a tweet, and it goes very nicely, and it's the sound of money, (laughs) okay? (laughs) So what we want people to do is we want them to follow you back. So you have to entice them to follow you back. The way to do that is to provide money. Well, you could pay them. You could pay them. That would be good. But let's not do that. Let's create an environment where they will want to follow you. How do you do that? Well, the first way, Twitter says the best way to do that is to get their attention through pictures, so not Kim Kardashian's booty. <laughs> oh, man. Unique pictures, unique information. Uh, um, I forget what they call them. What are those things called that you have the uh, the pictures that are um, – oh, rats, I'm blanking here. But anyway, it's uh, it's these pictures that uh, – that, uh, infographic, that's what it infographic. is. Infographic. Have you ever heard of that? Infographic. Okay. I have no idea. Okay, so you have no – you really are coming at this cold. So I'm assuming that everybody listening right now is like you, that they may not have – gone on Twitter before. So let's establish an account. Step one, establish your account. Step two, establish connections and followers and follow people that have similar interests to you through that little hashtag mechanism. Do a search, start building your list, 10, 20, 30 names. There's a little magic point in Twitter land, and that magic point is 2,000. You cannot follow any more than 2,000 people until you have 2,000 people following you. I had no idea. That's very interesting. Okay, it is interesting. So what will happen is let's say that you get on there and you start to just all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to go bonkers on this and I'm going to start following, I don't know, 2,500 people. And you only have 100 people following you. Twitter will magically cut you off at 2,000. Now, you might get to 2,005, maybe even 2,009, but you are going to get cut off at 2,000. But I'm, but I'm really interesting. Both of my followers tell me that all the time. <laughs> okay. So what you want to do is you want to get people on your list. That's why it's important to get people on your list that will follow you back. So how do you do that? You start providing them content that's of interest to them. If you're in a, uh, give me a business. What, what's your, what, what business are you in? I'm in the business of music. Okay, so you're in the business of music. How about, uh, and I know you're a guitar player, so you're a good guitar player too. And what's your guitar brand of choice? I love Carvin guitars. Okay, but you love Carvin guitars, but you are now in the business of selling, um, selling your band. Okay. Okay. So maybe with Carvin Guitars. Oh, I have a Carvin also. That's good. I love that. It's amazing how that works. Good tie. I helped you put that together. uh, You you did, although I'm nowhere near the player that you are. So Carvin is now our our picture of choice. We're going to take a really beautiful picture from online. Maybe the the Carvin uh, website has some great pictures. You're going to put a little motivational saying, uh, you know, every day is an E chord when I'm hanging out with you or something like that. But we shouldn't make a G-string reference. No, probably no G-string reference. No, but I like that. Okay, Okay, so we're going to put this picture up on Twitter, and our job is to try to get people to have some level of interest with it. So we got this picture up on Twitter. You got somebody that comments on it. You want to go to them, and you want to comment also on the stuff that they have. So what we're doing right now is we're building some level of relationship. Uh, We talked about in a previous podcast about the importance of building a network and relationships and creating a connection. That's all we're doing here on Twitter. We're going to find people that have similar interests to us. We're going to get them to follow us. We could even ask them to follow us. Now, they do say it's not proper etiquette for you to ask somebody to follow you. But I have, especially in the beginning when I was first starting out and had a very, very small list, my job was trying to build that list. I said, I followed you. Kindly follow me back. Yeah, it's probably not the the right way to do it. I know I have people cringing that are listening to this right now, but for me, that was the way for me to do it. So once I got my list to a hundred people following me, and then beyond that, I would again, I'm just trying to to elicit some interest in them through that through that search mechan- mechanism. So I've gotten a couple of people to follow. 
I've used Manage Flitter. Again, you can get online and try to figure out what, what they're all about. They have tutorials on YouTube. Just just check it out. It is, it is a, a, a really good source of, uh, of Twitter followers. And um, you're just trying to, 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 to boost your list. So now I've got a whole bunch of people that are following me, maybe 100, maybe 200. In the beginning, you're probably going to have 600 people that you're following, and you may have only 100 people following you. Again, you just want to try to make connections with the people. You want to look and see who they're following. You want to get involved with the people that, that are in their network also. And then you're slowly but surely going to build a list. This is not overnight. You're not going to build 5,000 followers overnight. But, but Doug, I, I've heard where I can go out and buy 5,000 followers overnight. Well, you can buy 5,000 followers overnight, and it'll cost you 10 or 20 or 50 bucks or whatever it is. But these are all spam accounts. Nobody, nobody's legitimately following you. They're, they're, just, they're just to bolster your, your numbers. And I'll tell you, I'd, like I said before, I'd much rather have 100 or 1,000 followers that are quality followers than have 50 or 100,000 followers of people that aren't going to do anything. Because really, the ultimate... The ultimate goal in this particular case is to have people – I mentioned to you before we even started this podcast to have this funnel effect. What you want to happen is you want everybody that is on Twitter – because you only have 140 characters. You want everybody that's on Twitter to make their way to some level of content that you have. It may be your website. It may be your LinkedIn page. It may be your Facebook page. It may be – all you're trying to do is get people to do something with that information. So Twitter is the funnel to get them to the other places. Twitter Twitter is the funnel. If you have, it, really think about it, you really only have 140 characters to do something with them. And pretty pictures. And pretty pictures. And what's really nice, the way that I use Twitter is if I can't say something in 140 characters, I can put 10,000 characters on a uh, in my content. So all I'm trying to do in, or through my pretty picture, all I want people to do is is take action. And the way that they take action is by clicking on a link that you have on Twitter, whether it's through your website, whether you want them to look at your profile, whether you want them to buy your book. Uh, I do a lot of promotion through, uh, through um, Twitter for, for my book sales. Okay, so you talked about hashtags before. What should I do with hashtags? Well, hashtags you're going to use as a search mechanism to help you find people that have similar interests to you. So let's just say that you want to find other people that are, and stop me if I'm not answering the question correctly, but you want people that have interest in guitars to to be a part of your network. Okay. Okay, because you're in the music business. Right. And uh, you want to either sell guitars, or you want to sell lessons, or you want to just get, you want to find a whole bunch of people that are like you. Like John Bon Jovi. Okay, so John Bon Jovi. So great. So, well, that's good. So John Bon Jovi actually would be a good start. So you go to John Bon Jovi's account, and you find, because you can look up John Bon Jovi, and you can find out all of the people that are following him. Some of those people are going to be just rock and roll fans. Some of those people are going to be guitar aficionados you're going to see that uh i don't know if he's a gibson player if he's a carvin player if he's a martin player if he's a a prs player i'm not sure but all you're going to try to do is find other people that have similar interests to you and now john bon jovi and we're trying to make build these these connections did did that 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 makes sense i i was talking about like creating hashtags is there a reason that we should create hashtags well you can create your own hashtag but what's what's interesting about it is there's so many other hashtags that are already out there you know, um, you could create a nice guys finish first hashtag, but um, maybe there already is a nice guys hashtag that other people are using. And maybe that's going to put um, – I, I use a hashtag a lot. It's uh, event profs, E-V-E-N-T-P-R-O-F-S. And it's hashtag event profs. Everybody that's in an event professional uses that hashtag as they are tweeting. And so I am coming together with all of these other people, and uh, we have a common interest. We have a lot of connections. And now I'm starting to follow all of those people. They are following me back. They see that I'm a, a hashtag event profs kind of guy. So hashtags are more than just create one because I want the world to actually use it, and that'll be really cool. It's really more about finding people with commonalities. It's definitely finding people with commonalities. What's interesting about it, too, is that you can do, if you're at a conference or you're at a, you're on vacation and you want to find other people that are at Disney in 2015, you just enter in Disney 2015, you will find people that have the interest in Disney in 2015. That's cool. So how often should I be tweeting? Uh, All the time. (laughs) Every minute of every day. Well, it depends on how serious you are about it. Okay, so let's take a guy that's got a full-time job. 
you may not be able to tweet between the hours of nine and five. So what do you do? Well, there's a lot there's a lot of services that are out there that will allow you to like manage Flitter, like Hootsuite, that will allow you to tweet during times when you can't. I'm not talking about robo tweeting. I don't want you to just go out there again. We talked in a previous podcast about puking product. I'm not looking for you to just go out there and start throwing all this message out and not respond to people. But if you're on Hootsuite or Manage Flitter, you can set up a schedule where you may want to put a piece of information out uh, maybe every other day about a piece of con- uh, you know a a, uh, a piece of writing that you have done um, a blog that you have that, that you've written but uh, it's it's great to post you want to post many more than one time if you hit somebody at two o'clock in the afternoon today that's going to be a, up a feed and you're not going to be a feed is that little list of all the things that are on Twitter you, you're going to miss an entire market if you only tweet that once. You want to tweet it many times. I have, I have, I've been writing blogs for almost the last two years, and um, I probably repeat that blog, you know, throw that out on Twitter land uh, once or twice a week. So uh, every couple of days is good. I mean, you don't have to tweet like four times a day. Will people get tired of seeing my tweets and ignore me and unsubscribe and not follow me anymore if I do that? Okay, so I would tell you that you don't want to tweet just four times a day. It's not enough. You know, tweeting is one of those things that you just begin to put into your everyday schedule. So maybe as you're having coffee in the morning, maybe you send out a couple of tweets. Maybe as you're at your lunch break, you send out a couple more tweets. And I'm not just talking about I'm sitting down having breakfast or I'm having a cup of coffee. What you want to do is you want to provide content-rich information to the people that are following you. You want to link them back to your website. You want to link them back to LinkedIn. You want to link them to uh, a blog that you are writing. Any piece of information that will make you the expert is what you want to try to do. And what's really great about it is the more people that you include as a part of your tweet, the more people that you have following you, the more people that will follow you. Does that make sense? You know, you have you have eight thousand people that follow you. Now you're sending out your message to eight thousand, and if they like it, uh, right before we started this podcast, I got on there and showed you a promo that I did on the book on my book, and um, somebody that has many more followers than I do, thirty two thousand followers, took my promotion of my website. Here comes another one right now, and um, and retweeted it to their followers. They had thirty two thousand followers. That sounds like online networking. That's really what it's all about, And that's what it is all about. It is online networking, and that's all we're going to do with Twitter. So we've established this Twitter account. We're trying to build up our our follower base and our following base. Uh, We've used Managed Flitter. We are, we're tying people back to our website. We're tying people back to our content. I, I, the important thing to realize is that you are not tweeting what you had for breakfast. Certainly great. If you want to do that, that's terrific. But I can't tell you the last time I tweeted a meal. But my breakfast was really, really good. <laughs> well, in your particular case, all right. So you might want to tweet your meal every once in a while. So, Doug, is there a good time or a bad time to tweet during well, the day? Twitter is, um, is everywhere. You know, if I'm tweeting right now, what time is it in Australia? You know, what time is it now? Yeah, that's right good now, point. it's about 4:26 in the afternoon right now. So, is it? Well, wait a minute. It's probably 4:26 in the afternoon there too, but it's just a whole day ahead, right? No, it's 4:26 in the morning. Okay, there. okay. so it's 12. I don't know what time it is. That you know, Strick and I were not the international date experts here. <laughs> but let's just take Europe. Europe is six hours ahead. So if I'm tweeting right now at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, uh, is it – or Tuesday or whatever today is, is uh, if it's 10 o'clock in the evening there, maybe there's somebody just getting off of work that's interested in reading the tweet or reading the feed. So really any time is a good time any to tweet. Any time. It's a, that is the amazing thing about Twitter. It never sleeps. It never sleeps. It's like a slot machine. Kind of like a you slot know, machine. It's like the dealer that brings in so much Wait, money and you never have think, to pay I him. think now you'd make a movie reference. Is there any a casino or any, got any, any you know, I'm trying to hold back. This is like your episode, Doug. I don't want to dive in with the movie reference, but... You know, you just never know. So, All right, so uh, we so we got Twitter. We we've touched a little bit on it. I know we, we I could I could spend probably five hours just talking about Twitter. But uh, let's go on to the next thing. We talked about hashtags. We talked about graphics. Uh, yeah, let's let's just spend a moment talking about the direct messaging on Twitter. If if you're a part of Twitter and you're sending out direct messages, you're only hitting one person, one specific person. Forget it. Stop doing it. It's not important. I, and there's going to be, again, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing people cringing as I'm saying that, but 
If you're using direct messaging, you're annoying the person that you're directly messaging. I promise you that. <laughs> All right. So if you want to hit the world, you tweet. If you want to get them directly, send them an email. Don't use Twitter direct message. Oh, that's message. good. That's good. That would, that would be the way to go. All right. Both of my followers now will be really happy <laughs> that I've gotten this amazing education on Twitter. All right. Twitter. So you know what you need to do. You I, need to build your list. I need to make it into four followers now. <laughs> So Doug, well, you could double it. <laughs> I could. That'd be pretty amazing. I, mean, I bet you're not going to double your Twitter following tomorrow, are you? Not in one day. That no. would be a little challenging. But but if you if you are not following me, and I, I, probably I don't know why we didn't think about this before, you need to start following at DJ Doug at DJ D O U G. Please start following me, and I promise I will follow you back. And you'll get a nice little picture in the meantime as well. Aw, I want a nice little picture from Doug. Oh, you already got one. I know. I'm I am one of those you. two followers. Yeah, yeah, he's right. <laughs> He's right. So I understand that LinkedIn also, that is like the, the Facebook of business. Okay. So uh, we're not going to have a lot of time to talk about LinkedIn today. Let's just talk about some of the some of the basics of LinkedIn. Wait a minute. Is this going to be like one of those TV shows where is. you leave like the, the hanger at the end and you got to wait a week? Well, there's not going to be a big cliffhanger, but uh, you're either going to be waiting a week or if you're not catching the show until a little bit later on, you just follow it and go listen to the next one because the next show is going to be all about LinkedIn. But let's... Let's spend just a couple of moments talking about the the components of LinkedIn. But really, the number one component in LinkedIn that we didn't even uh, really discuss, Strick, is your profile. The profile is it's critical. The profile uh, is critical. You, um, if you're on LinkedIn, it's very important that you have not only a picture. You need to have a picture. Oh, go back to Twitter for a second. Get rid of the egg. You need a you need a photo of yourself, and don't put an icon up there. Make take it a photo of yourself. People want to connect with people. They don't want to connect with with uh, with icons. Right, and you know, on my LinkedIn profile, I had this amazing time at spring break a couple of years ago, <laughs> and it's like this huge Mexican hat, and right. I've got a beer in Think each about hand. It. And, Think and, about and, it. Think about what you're talking about. Yeah. We're LinkedIn. We're professionals. Now, you put that on Facebook, and you're okay. You put that on LinkedIn, you're going to have people that you that potentially are going to not take you seriously because you're wearing the sombrero. Maybe they'll take me more seriously because I'm wearing a cool sombrero. Uh, maybe. Do you actually have a sombrero? On no, I don't really <laughs> I have say, a I hope, sombrero. I hope you don't have a sombrero. I'm on just that trying photo. to get the conversation going. It, it, would, there, Doug. it wouldn't be unusual for me to see that you in a sombrero on uh, on LinkedIn, but uh, but I'm thinking that you probably know better than you that. You can tell this is a very well scripted show. Obviously, okay. We so this out. so LinkedIn. Talk about profile. You do not want to put your your entire resume and every bit of information about your. Entire entire life story in your profile. Contrary to popular belief, people will read portions of your profile. They're not going to read the entire thing. So if you're great, we all know that you're great. Just save it for a personal connection. You don't have to get into every single thing that you have done. If you want to put your college in there, that's great. If you want to put the courses that you studied, you want to put a bio or a little program description or a product that you happen to be very, very um, uh, happy about or proud of, that's great. But don't put everything about you. The other thing, really important, and make sure that there's a way for people to reach you. Uh, I've seen, I've gone to a number of times, gone to people's profiles, and they don't even have their email address in there. They don't have their phone number. If you want business from me, I'm not going to seek any further. I'm not going to go any further than trying to find your LinkedIn information and your contact info. If it's not there, I'm moving on to the next person. Well, I think that's a good start. I'm guessing that most of you guys are probably just about to work by now. So we're going to tease this. We're going to get into our next podcast next week. It's going to be all about LinkedIn. We are going to talk about personal posts. We're going to talk about the pulse. We're going to talk about the wall. And I'm not talking about the 1979 Pink Floyd album either. <laughs> and more importantly, something that even if you guys are pros on LinkedIn, you may not know how important the discussion Ooh, groups Yeah, the discussion are. groups. I love those. Yeah, we'll that is what we're going to get deep into that. So so uh, we want to make sure that you guys have lots of content, lots of good information to get, uh, whether it's on your ride to work or whether you're trying to ignore your kids at home or whatever the case may be. Um, we are the nice guys. We and need more info. We need more info from, from our listeners. We want to know what they want. We need lots more info from you guys. If you've been listening to the first couple of podcasts, we appreciate it. We love you so much for making we it this you. long. We want you to subscribe. We really want you to comment. If you can go on to wherever it is that you get your subscription from, from your podcast, Podcast, put a comment up and tell us what you think. You love us. You hate us. We're too funny. We're too serious. We're too... 
No, too we're not funny. too serious. No, we, <laughs> that would never happen. Um, but really, whatever it is that you guys want to hear about, wherever you need help with your business specifically, put a comment in. Let us know. Come and find us because um, we want to help you out. Um, All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I'm Strickland Bonner. And I am Doug Sandler. And uh, we're going to let Steve O'Brien talk us out. I love our music. I love Steve. Yeah. Thanks for listening to The Nice Guys with your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Get more info and stay in touch at niceguysonbusiness.com.